And, and we need to ask ourselves, have we bought in as, as, as disciples of Jesus or have we bought in as disciples of Caesar? Okay? And, and we have to ask ourselves, are we presenting a model that the world might look to and follow? Or has the world presented us a model that, that we unfortunately look to and follow? Now, we've, we've gotten away with a whole lot of stuff. And this is what Joshua is telling the children of Israel. All that you've gained, all the prosperity, all, all those, the mountains that you've crossed and the, and the oceans that, that you have passed, the giants and, and the famines and, and the desert, all the, and the enemies, you thought they were defeated at your hand. But, but they were defeated by the hands of God. You thought your gains were, were by your talents and your strength, but your gains were by the hand of God. All that you have and all that you have avoided are by the hand of God. Simply, Israel, understand that. We need to understand that as Americans as well. Christian Americans. That, that we have embraced, sort of, the teachings of Jesus when they're convenient. <laughs> and, and, and proclaimed the hand of God in our lives. But, but when not convenient, we find it so easy to embrace Caesar, okay? That's what I'm talking about today. We have to come to realize and try to understand the prosperity in this nation, if you can call it prosperity. If there is prosperity, it is not by our righteousness, but it's by the blessing, by the hand of God. And I'd even go so far as to challenge if we can actually call it prosperity. This journey that the, that the United States of America has taken over the past 200 and some years. When you compare the United States to, to other nations on this planet, we recognize other nations, China, Britain, Africa, the nations in Africa, and other nations all over this planet are thousands of years old. And, and so when you compare that to the 200 plus years that the United States of America has been in, in, in existence, we are just beginning to enter adolescence. And, and so you, can you judge the prosperity of a child at the time of adolescence? If they've been living in their mama's house and have been getting everything for free. I think we need to begin to critically examine ourselves and ask ourselves have we truly have we truly embraced the teachings of Jesus we, we call ourselves Christians but are we really Christians because we're given to understand that it's pretty easy to be saved but to be a Christian is to be a disciple of Jesus is to walk like Jesus to love like Jesus to lay down our lives our wants our desires for the sake of others like Jesus are we Christians or are we just saved? And like Israel, do we believe that the benefits, do we believe that the victories, do we believe that the sustenance that, that we have been surrounded, that we have, we have been surrounded with and blessed with bountifully for so many years, is it by our hand or by the grace and the mercy of a God that loves us? Is it because we've made the right decisions and we, we've gained what was rightfully ours? Is it because we have walked in any kind of hypocrisy, any kind of evil, uh, exploiting and killing and murdering and stealing from any type of people, but still experiencing blessing from God? Look at the story. Joshua talking to Israel. They, they had to understand. Joshua had to make them understand that, that they weren't right most of the time. They made a lot of mistakes. They did a lot of grumbling. They did a lot. They, they, they came to a point that we understand in Scripture that God was like ready to kill them, okay? But still, they were the recipients of bountiful blessings of God. They had to recognize that what they had was, was by no means a result of their good works. And I'm suggesting today it's time for believers to begin to be more honest. Because as we look at our nation, we are suffering. We are suffering in so many ways. We, and, and to me, and this is what we're, we're talking about today, is that we've bought into the party line. We, we've bought into Caesar's line. 
And when I'm speaking of Caesar, particularly in, in, in a spiritual message to, to believers, we're not talking necessarily about the government itself, but about unbelievers. That's Caesar. And, and unbelievers, whether they're in the role of government, whether they're in the role of, of of just folks out there. We, we, we're so addicted to our Fox News, to our MSNBC, to our CNN, to our news broadcast, to Caesar's broadcast. That we're led here and there like by our noses, by like a ring in our nose. As believers. And so what I'm suggesting to you today is, I mean, we, First, in all humility, to recognize we have not been all that good. We have not been all that Christian from the time we stepped, we stepped, from the time the Europeans set foot on this continent. In the name of God, in the name of Jesus, searching for religious freedom and, and religious this and that. They were all that Christian. They may have been saved because that's easy, just accepting what Jesus did, even in spite of your own unrighteousness and your own wickedness. But the reality is there were people here when the Europeans landed here. And, and so, you know, even sort of mathematically, we can try to determine this manifest destiny. They didn't know it. We came, or they, somebody came, and, and whatever. We, we can justify our evils. We do that all the time. There was a woman that you gave me, Lord. It wasn't me. We justify our evil from the first man. What I'm suggesting today is we can just cut out all of the excuses and all of the justifications and, and figuring and ciphering and all that and say, look, there were people here when the Europeans landed here. Where are those people today? The Europeans that came here came here in the name of God, in the name of Christianity, and there were people that were here. We all know the first, the Thanksgiving and, and, and Squanto and how they helped save the pilgrims and all that stuff, and there's more to those stories than that. But where are the descendants of Squanto now? Where are the, the, the descendants of the indigenous people of this land that were here when those that came in the name of God and the name of religion landed here? We didn't come here as Christians, or Europeans didn't come here as Christians. These are the things we have to understand. These are the things like Joshua talking to the children of Israel. We need a reality check. We're not all that. We're not what we've been putting, that, that image that we've been putting out there. We are not that. We have exploited people. We have destroyed people. And the Native Americans, where are they today? They're not here. Why? Man, as I, as I drive sometimes over, you know, over through the country, I, I'd be looking out sometimes to see the vast trees and, and, and all nature. And I think what a beautiful land this must have been when the Native Americans lived here. There were so many. They were everywhere. Nations upon nations of people, not just the Indians, one group. Many nations of Native Americans to this continent. Where are they now? So, so right there, we have to, if we want to be honest, if, if the truth like Jesus says does in fact make us free, we have to begin to judge ourselves and revisit the ancestors, those that were here before us, what they did and what we are benefiting from. Why do we consider ourselves prosperous today and as whose expense was it? Europeans that came here searching for religious freedom were not Christians. They may have been saved, but they were not disciples of Jesus, or they wouldn't have done or participated in, or even their descendants, Christians today in America, wouldn't be so seemingly prosperous on the, on the pain and blood and misery of so many people. And so that's one thing in the name of Jesus. Second thing, in the name of Jesus, I mean, come on, you, you have Africans that were brought here as slaves. They were, they were raped, they were tortured, they were murdered, and all kinds of terrible things were done to the slaves. Every, every kind of perversion or, or, or torturous thing you can think of that people do today to folks illegally and get caught and go to prison. Well, if you owned a human being, you could do whatever you wanted to do with them. So it wasn't just the women and children that were being raped. 
You need to understand the wickedness and the evil done by so-called Christians who are the owners of slaves in America. Not even to mention the Native Americans, which we've already discussed. So, I mean, all these things are in the name of Jesus. The, the prosperity, the so-called prosperity that many are living and experiencing now were, were birthed from the evil and wickedness of Antichrist calling themselves Christians. And so honestly, we have to recognize, or folks have to recognize, believers, Christians, many have to recognize, especially Euro-American uh, uh, Christians, have to recognize that much of the benefit, much of the so-called prosperity, much of their, their ease and leisure in life, they inherited from, from the wickedness done to other folks in this nation. And that's just a simple reality. And, and I, you know, I, I'm not even getting it all back. We're not even going there. We're just saying, just as Joshua was speaking to the children of Israel, getting, giving them a reality check, we need to have a reality check. Because the, the reality is, and what I want to suggest today is, and what Joshua was warning the children of Israel, actually giving them the option to choose this day, who you, will you serve? Will you serve the God, God for real? Or, or will you serve the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell? Will you serve the gods of those in whose land you dwell? But I'm suggesting today, as so-called believers, we've bought into lies, we've bought into wickedness, we've bought into evil. We, we, we've experienced it, we, we, are, we have gained from it, and we are denying that it even existed, the evil, that people were even hurt at the hands of our so-called Christian founding fathers. And what I'm suggesting today, until you have this reality check, until you embrace the truth, you've chosen to follow a God other than the God of Jesus. Because the God of Jesus teaches us of a love that we can't even fathom for your, for your fellow human being. The God of Jesus teaches that he loved everyone on this planet so much that he sent his only begotten son. The God of Jesus gives an example of a Jesus that laid down his life not for those who loved him, but for those who hated him. And even in his last and dying breath, uttered the words, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Not those that loved him, but those that hated him from time past, present, and future. This is the God of the Jesus that we are supposed to be serving. So what I'm suggesting today is if we don't have that love, and I'll tell you, this thing with Obama, to me, has brought out of, of the body of believers a particular illness. And, and it hasn't created the illness, it just revealed an illness. I, I am amazed at seeing so many Tea Party believers. <laughs> tea, tea Party is a political movement, but we're talking about believers. I, I'm amazed to see so much hate and so much venom, to see the divide even in the church. Scripture tells us that a house divided cannot stand. And, and, and this is an evil, a sickness that, that is even, has been within the church. It's sort of like the scripture tells us about the dross, you know, that when a piece of metal is heated and heated beyond its, its, its capacity to withstand, that the impurities are brought out of, of that piece of metal. This is, in fact, a positive thing, but we are being purged of the impurities from within us. And I'm suggesting today that believers, believers are like that iron that's being heated beyond its capacity. Are you the pure or are you the dross? Are you that which is to stay and remain, or are you that which is to be cast away into the rubbish? 